So today we're going to be looking at our first lesson in our matter unit, and this lesson basically we're just going to be talking about what is matter. And we study matter because basically it makes up everything around us. Um, essentially everything in the universe is made of either matter or energy. And we define matter as anything that has mass and takes up space, meaning we can see it, there's something in it, and we can measure how much of that it is, and we can measure how big it is. So when we talk about measuring mass, that's just the amount of matter in an object. And we use, in science at least, the metric system to measure, so we'll measure in grams or kilograms. So if we say that an object's mass is 5 grams, that just means that there's enough atoms in that object to give it 5 grams of, we would call it weight if we put it on a scale, but really it's the mass, it's how much matter is in that object. Volume, on the other hand, that tells us how much space it takes up. So if I have this can sitting on the table, it's taking up a certain amount of space in the room. And that would be the object's volume. And we would measure that depending on whether we're talking about a solid object, like maybe a soda can, or liquid, like the amount of coke that's in the can. Uh, liquids would typically measure in milliliters, and solid objects will use cubic centimeters as our volume. And we can use that, uh, measure that rather, with a graduated cylinder in the case of a liquid, or we can use an object's displacement, drop it in water and see how much water it displaces to measure the volume of a solid object. So those are really our two key properties of matter, this idea of mass, the fact that it has matter, it has atoms and molecules in it making it up, and volume, the amount of space that it takes up. We also talk about matter as existing in different states, meaning it can be a solid, it can be a liquid, it can be a gas. And matter can exist in any of these states, but it can transition from one state to another based on changes in temperature. We know if we take an ice cube that's solid and sit it out on the counter in the room, over time it's going to warm up, it's going to heat up, and it's going to melt, turning from a solid to a liquid. If we put that water into a pot, put it on the stove and boil it, that would change from a liquid to a gas. So we have all these different changes in states that arise from changes in temperature. Uh, if it's going from a solid to a liquid, we would say it's melting. Liquid to a gas, it's boiling. Gas back to a liquid, it's condensation. Liquid changing to a solid would be freezing. And then you have some less common instances where you might go directly from a solid to a gas. Uh, carbon dioxide is a great example of that. Dry ice is solid carbon dioxide, but if we sit it on the counter, it won't change to a liquid. It'll go directly to a gas. We call that sublimation. And then there's also the process going directly from gas to liquid called deposition. Over the next few lessons, we'll be looking at some different properties of matter that we can measure, uh, physical properties, chemical properties, as well as looking at how matter can be changed in a variety of methods.